microphone on. Good to go. Good to start. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Pool School. A uh, little bit of a unique pool school. If uh, some of you guys are used to our classes, we're with the COVID-19 outbreak, we are 100% streaming today. Um, no people in our classroom, which is a little bit different from for Andrew and I. Uh, we do miss your guys' faces, but we are we are trying to be as safe as possible. So we uh, thank you guys for sticking with us and hanging in there and, and streaming online with us today. Um, with that said, welcome. Uh, today's class is going to be the Easy Touch panel um, slash Screen Logic remote that works with this panel in particular. We are going to get into settings, menu options, schedules, um, a ton of options and, and ways to run this panel and uh, screen logic running also on the phone. We will mirror that and you guys will be able to kind of walk through with us as we go. With that said, to answer uh, the very first question, we're probably going to get the newer panels, the IntelliCenters. Um, it's, if you have an IntelliCenter in your backyard, it won't look like this. You have more of a roughly a two inch by three inch screen that's a touch screen. Uh, this class will not do anything with that. Um, this is only easy touch and screen logic today. The class for the IntelliCenter we will be doing next month. And in the next week or so, we are going to uh, record um, a non-streaming video, Andrew and I, of that panel too. So keep an eye out for that. Um, we know there's a, a lot of those panels starting to get out there and People have questions on those and want to see the app and everything just like we're going to do today. So we're working on that. Uh, within the week, we will have a video up, a YouTube link um, that will go over that panel in particular, as well as the app. Um, and then we will most likely have a pool school on it too. Um, most likely streaming like we are today, um, but we'll be able to, that will be live. So if you have any questions as we go, we'll be able to do that. So with that said, we'll get into this panel. Um, also wanted to add, if uh, at any point you have a question, please be patient as uh, we have a lot more people online today, obviously, with everything going on. Um, we have Andrew at the computer answering you guys' questions as quick as possible. Um, so please be patient with that. We're going to try and go through as much as we can. Um, so hopefully we cover it all. But if you have any questions, again, be patient with Andrew as he's, uh, as he's trying to knock them all out as they come in. So. So let's get started. This easy touch panel, um, we're gonna start out at the panel itself. The first thing you'll notice um, on this panel, the screen is dim. There is what's called a sleep mode on this. So anytime that you guys wanna get into the panel itself from outside, you will have to wake it up. Any of these buttons will wake up the panel. We'll hit the menu button, for instance, and we'll have the screen light up. The first thing you'll notice on this panel is that it says auto, pool, air, Saturday gives you the date time and for instance right now we have a low speed running with a heater enabled we'll kick that off for now and we'll come back into that big thing on this is that it's auto mode there is a button on this panel right here that is mode um, if you push that you can change the mode of the of the panel to a service mode and there's also a timeout mode Service mode and timeout mode are generally used for pool service technicians. They usually will use this if they're working on the pool, if they want to run the pump from the pump itself. Um, just know what it is. Um, sometimes pool guys will leave it in service mode or timeout mode. What this will do is disable your pumps from your phone app or from being able to turn it on even from the panel. So if you see any of this, um, the best thing to do unless they're working on the system and hopefully they tell you that they're doing that. And that's why it's in service mode. Always kick it back to auto if you're having any issues with your remotes. Um, if you're seeing a service mode uh, prompt on your phone, make sure and come out here. If it uh, is in service mode, kick that mode button right next to the V and kick it back to auto. Auto will now let you recommunicate with your pump, recommunicate with the app, let you turn everything on and off, lights, et cetera, water features, all that stuff. So. We always wanna be in auto. The next thing you'll see is the air uh, temperature. The air temperature is there. Um, it usually hangs down at the bottom of the panel. 
This is there to give you kind of a general idea of air temperature, obviously, but also um, to protect against a winter freeze. Uh, when it gets cold enough, that air temperature will kick on anything that we enable for freeze protect, and we'll get into that in the menus in a minute. Um, it will kick on uh, like a low speed, for instance, and have the pump come on to protect from pipes freezing. We generally don't run into it in this state, um, in Arizona, but other states that get uh, obviously a lot colder can have that happen, and that's what it's there for is a freeze protect. And then, of course, your day and time. Getting into the buttons on the on the, the panel itself, you do have a menu button. We're going to be using that button quite a bit in this uh, seminar. You have a left and a right button that will get you through some of the menu options, of course, and then you have up and down that will do the same thing. Starting from left to right on the bottom row, you have that mode button we just spoke about. You do have a valve button. Um, we generally don't get into the valve button um, unless you have a spa mode. So you, if you have a pool spa, you will have a label down here that will say spa, and that is your on and off button if you are outside turning everything on and off. There is a heater button. We generally don't use this or the solar, and that's because we use it in the menus or on the phone. Um, and again, we'll go over that. The top row, generally speaking, your F button is gonna be labeled your low speed or pool. Sometimes you'll see it, pool low. For us, when we set up our panels, that F button is almost always a low speed. Um, and low speed meaning um, low speed and high speed on the variable pumps. That will always be your low speed. We're gonna come back to that button in a second here and explain the importance of it. The rest of them are your auxiliaries. Most of you have a four auxiliary system, one, two, three, and the F button, meaning you have four auxiliaries in this panel to turn things on and off like a light, like a booster pump, a blower in a spa, anything of that nature. We can run landscape lights to it if we wanted to. Um, that's what those relays are for. In an instance where you need more relays, that's where the four through seven buttons will come into play, and that's an easy touch eight. It's If you don't have that, it's an upgraded board to give you more options. Um, and these are simply your on-off. So for instance, pool lights, we could turn on pool light by itself uh, from the number one button instead of using the app um, if you're having issues with that or you're out at the panel itself. The reset button is simply a reset button to reset the panel. Um, if you're having any issues, you think something's kind of um, something's kind of screwy in the, in the panel itself, you can always try that reset button. It will not lose any of your settings, your schedules, any of that stuff. It simply just reboots the the board, uh, much like a computer, just shutting down and rebooting. We gotta remember these are computer boards, so they can get glitchy at times. Um, not real common, but it can happen. You can try that reset button. So coming back to this F button, this button um, in particular, like we said, runs your low speed. Um, in an instance where you also have a heater or a heat pump, the F button and the V button that we talked about for spa, these two buttons are the only buttons that will enable a heat mode. So if you have a heater or a heat pump, gas or electric in other words, those two buttons are the only ones that are going to kick on the heater and enable it through the settings. We are going to talk about that a little more, but just know these two buttons are the only ones that will do that. The F button in particular also will run a salt system. If you have an ozone system, if you have a UV system, that button will be the only button that will control the relay that those things power up from. Those are salt systems, the UVs, those are on a hard relay, meaning they're hardwired to a relay, not communication ports. So if we kick on an F button with a salt system, it then powers up the transformer for the salt system. That will then kick everything on together and that will be um, important when we get into schedules and go over that a little more. So in other words, the question we get a lot is your high speed or your cleaner speed. Number two, we get a lot of calls, especially in the summertime, that they're kicking on high speed and the salt cell's not coming on, and the salt cell's dead, it's not producing chlorine. That cleaner button by itself over there is a separate relay that is not wired to the salt system. So if you kick that on by itself, it will not kick on a salt system, it will not kick on an ozone generator or a UV, anything of that nature. Your F button is simply the relay to kick that stuff on. Um, Pool lights, again, pool lights, high speed water feature, all separate relays, um, which we'll kind of talk about. But these, these are essentially your on off buttons and that's it, nothing, nothing too crazy. Getting into this menu, um, 
first thing we're going to do if you have to wake the panel up you would hit it of course if you've got a backlight on you'll be able to hit the button once and get into your menus the first thing that pops up is a feature circuits this menu option right here is uh basically there so again if we like we talked about if you have four auxiliaries these are hard relays some of these guys can run just off of a communication port and they don't need to take up a hard relay. In an instance where we need hard relays, you would have a pool light, a blower maybe, and a booster pump, a single speed pump. We can run your high speed over to feature circuits and give you more options as far as menus go and kicking stuff on or off. So if we hit select on a feature circuit, we have kind of a mock setup in here of just that. We have a pool high, and we have a spillway function. We set this up to be a pool spa. So if we wanted to go down, we're gonna arrow down, and then we would kick our spillway on by hitting select. Spillway mode would be a mode where it sucks water from the pool, returns it 100% to the spa, and you have a water feature coming out of, this, uh, out of the spa. These are simply just on-off menus for anything extra outside of these buttons, in other words. You have your high speed, you have your spillway, we could set up multiple things in there as long as it just takes a communication to the pump. These modes cannot operate any auxiliaries, in other words, they would not operate a booster pump, they would not operate pool lights. To get out of this menu, and there's, before we get out, there's eight options in here. So we have plenty of options in there. Um, generally speaking, most pools aren't gonna use up all those. It's a ton of options and ton of things we can do. Um, so we're usually okay. Getting out of here and getting out of a lot of the menu options, our same menu button, you see that back circle, that's your back button to back up. The next menu is your lights. Your arrow down and we're hitting select on the lights. The lights menu is only gonna pertain to those of you guys that have multicolor lights. So if you have a Pentair multicolor light or a Pentair compatible light with our blue square lights, these are where you would now be able to choose your modes um, in other words, your color changing modes, your party modes, your romance, um, the USA mode, that kind of stuff. The colors is simply going to be solid colors. So if we select in the modes, we'll see those modes that we just talked about. Party, romance, Caribbean, American, sunset, royalty, and a hold, a recall, color swim. We're not going to use any of these except hold. Uh, what hold will do if we went through a slow color changing mode, let's say we went to Caribbean, take a couple seconds for that light to turn on. When Caribbean mode is cycling through the colors real slow, if you like a certain mix of colors, you can go into that hold menu, hit hold right at that time and it will pause that light. Um, other than that, these are just simply changing color changing modes for your pool light. If we back out, same thing with colors. We can go in there, we'll see our solid colors, blue, green, red, white, magenta, and a hold. The colors, the solid colors, most popular is blue, of course, um, but that's where that is in there. And when we get into the app, we'll see these options in the, in the app also. I'm gonna menu out of there, all on, all off. What we're gonna do all on is if you had multiple lights in your yard, if you had landscape lights um, that work with the Pentair system, um, if you had multiple lights in the pool, you had three lights in the pool and maybe you have some laminar lights um, coming out of the out of the deck jets. If you uh, switch all on, it's going to kick them all on. They could possibly be on separate relays. Uh, most homeowners like the pool light to be separate from the bubbler light or the laminar light. So they will be able to operate individually and not come on together all the time. So simply if you or this button is simply an all on just to kick them all on or all off. Um, with that said, the color changing modes and the solid colors too, anytime you select those, the way we set up our, our lights to all work with the Pender panel, if you select blue, it is always going to kick on all the lights together and sync them up to blue. Um, and then at that point, you can take your auxiliaries and shut them on or off individually. But anytime you select a color changing or a solid color, it is going to automatically sync all your lights in the pool. With that said, that sync button, you shouldn't you shouldn't need to use with our setup. Anytime you are out of sync, I always simply tell people to tell, or I tell homeowners to go right to the blue and let them sync that way. If you're continuing to have issues, call us, let us come out and take a look at it. The magic stream and the config option down here are not used for our systems. Um, 
just because we have our lights are Pentair compatible, meaning they work with the regular Pentair um, color scheme. The Magic Stream is a totally different setup that we do not use. The config menu is something for our guys to set up um, when they do startup. This basically tells the panel that we, hey, we have a pool light that's an, uh, a multicolored light. So other than that, there's no reason to get in there as far as the homeowners. We're gonna menu out of lights. Our next option is heat. You doing okay, Andrew? We're, uh, again, thanks for being patient with us. Andrew's, Andrew's hand, handling everything online with questions. So um, hopefully I'm not kind of racing through this. Next menu is going to be heat. We're gonna hit select on heat. Here we have pool and a spa temp setting. Going back to what we said, your pool is gonna be the F button, your spa is that V button. So let's say we wanted to heat the pool up um, starting to get a little bit warm outside, uh, especially these past couple of weeks, people are wanting to start firing up their heat pumps, their gas heaters to kick all the stuff on, get the temperature up a little bit and start swimming early. You would kick your low speed on. And you can come into here and hit select under pool low. You now see a temp setting. This is your desired temperature. So if we set this to 90 or 85, that's what we're asking the pool heater to heat up to. If you hit select, you will see off the heater. And those of you that have a heat pump, you will say heat pump in here. So if you leave this heat menu off, even with 85, it's not going to call for heat. You're, you're basically telling the heater, hey, I'm wanting you at 85 when I'm ready, but it's in standby mode. So if we arrow down or arrow up, you'll cycle through the options. If you only have one heater, you'll see it here. If you have a gas and electric, you'll see heater and heat pump. We would simply switch the heater. We have 85, we're gonna menu out. We're gonna go all the way back so we can see it now. So you'll see this on the menu, you'll see your pool is on now. You see a temperature reading of 74 degrees. That's your water temperature. That's actual temp and this is your desired temp. Because the desired temp is higher than the actual water temp, you now see a heater light up here or the, or the display your heater is being called to turn on and, and start heating. So, and this will run all the way until 85. We can kind of mock this with the left and right arrows, our desired temp. If we go down to that 74, it knows that it's now at the temperature you guys are requesting and you see that heater light go away. So if the temperature dipped 72, 73, we can kind of play with it. It then kicks your heater back on, works just like a heater in your house. So it's just maintaining the temperature you guys are calling for. We're gonna go back in there. We arrow down to spa. Again, same thing in here. This one is more kind of a standard setting. A lot of people will set 100, 102, 98, whatever you like it at, and they'll leave the heat menu right below it to heater. What this does is simply means everything's enabled. It's ready when they hit the V button to turn the spa mode on or they hit the spa mode on on their app or on a remote, it's going to automatically kick the pump on, turn the valves, it's enabled right here, so it's gonna also fire the heater up. Everything's a one button push. Some people like to be safe right here and leave the heat mode off, so it's just an extra step. And you turn your spa mode on, you would then have to make sure and enable the heat, otherwise you're going to be sitting there for an hour, two hours going, what the heck is going on? Oh, I don't have my heater enabled. So. And we'll get into that on the app too, so it's easy, but if we have that on again, and if we, we can switch it to spa, you'll see spa, you'll see your setting, or your uh, water temp, sorry, and your setting or your desired heat setting, and you see heater on. If you see all that stuff, your heater is now fired up and heating that spa, and you could watch those degrees come up pretty quick. We're gonna kick all this stuff off now. We're back to main menu, everything's down. Our next menu option is a delay cancel. We honestly don't use this a whole lot. Um, there's, there's some certain jobs out there that we set up some delays on um, for valves or something like that uh, of that nature. We don't use it a whole lot again. Um, all this button does is if you hit select on your delay cancel, it will cancel the delay, obviously. And so if you've got a two minute delay, whatever, it cancels that and kicks on or kicks off, whatever was supposed to come on or off after that delay. Not used a whole lot. Next one down, our big one, this is schedules. 
we're gonna hit select into schedules. This is where all your timers are. Your timers are up to you, the homeowner, to change out with season, to change out with bather load in the pool. Um, in other words, the amount of swimmers in the pool every day in the summer. If you're having a tremendous amount of people swimming every day, you may wanna kick your schedules up for a few different reasons. If you're in remote areas, Casa Grande, the Queen Creeks, um, Way out in surprise, you got a little more dirt than someone in, in central Phoenix. If you need to run your system longer because of that, this is where you're gonna come in and adjust this. Um, it is also on the app too. Um, and again, we'll talk about that in a second here. Um, but this is where you're gonna come in and, and adjust your schedules. Our spa, you can see we have zero uh, schedule set up for. Spa mode, you generally don't have on a schedule. Why? Because your pool low and your high speed are gonna be your main cleaning of the pool spa together every night. As these run, the spa mode will have um, an in-floor zone come up and clean the spa. So you don't need a spa mode per se to run on a schedule. That spa mode is essentially there for your, your enjoyment when you wanna heat the spa up and use the therapies. If I arrow down and hit select on pool low, we'll see our first one of one in here um, is an egg timer. The egg timer, I'm actually gonna come back to, we're gonna talk about that in a second here. I'm gonna go into your normal schedule modes. So we've got two of two, we've got a mode, we've got schedule, this is what you wanna see. Your Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, all your days have a dash above them. That means that every day that dash is got above it, it's going to come on. You can hit select, you can change your mode, schedule, none, delete, or once only, and we'll get into this in a second, or your egg timer. So if you hit it on schedule, we're now setting up your schedule for low speed, and if you remember, those U assault systems or UVs, ozone, you're gonna wanna run your low speed for the whole duration of your schedule period every day. In other words, if you're running your system nine hours a day, um, mid-June, you're running 8 a.m., 5 p.m., or whatever you wanna run it at. Most people run them at night. It's usually a little bit cheaper with electricity. This is your whole schedule. So if you're running a total of nine hours a day, you're running eight to five on that low speed. You gotta remember that's what kicks on the salt system or UV or an ozone. In other words, if we run this from eight to one and then one to five for your high speed, that salt system is only running from eight to one. So it's only gonna uh, produce chlorine for five hours a day. We get a lot of calls. Hey, the system's running. I've got it running on schedules. I got my salt system maxed out at 100%. I just can't keep chlorine in there. You got a lot of people swimming. We got kids. It's starting to turn green. You need to ramp up your low speed hours. Um, and generally speaking, you need to have it run the whole duration of your schedule. And I'll talk about that a little more with the high speed. So we have an eight to five, let's leave it at that, eight in the morning till five, the low speed kick comes on, kicks the salt system on, kicks the UV on, and runs for the whole nine hour duration. Meaning we're leaving everything run, the first, uh, let's do eight to one, the first five hours of low speed are going to run a real low speed just to circulate water in the pool, turn over the pool, and produce chlorine. At one o'clock, your high speed in this situation would then ramp up. It will come on in conjunction with your low speed, ramp up from one to five, really clean the pool. But because we have the low speed set up eight to five, it will, it will allow that salt system to run for those nine hours straight. At that point, if you're at nine hours straight and you're at 100% on the salt system, you are swimming an awful lot. You might have a bigger pool. You might be in those remote areas where you have a lot more stuff blowing into the pool, and you may need to kick this up even more. If you're running it nine, 10 hours a day and your salt system's at 100%, you've got your cell clean, you know everything's running right, you're just not seeing enough chlorine, you need to run your low speed longer. That, that, that's as simple as that. And every pool's different. Some pools are gonna are only gonna run four hours a day. They're, we call them spools. We have little 6,000 gallon uh, pools. They don't need to run nearly as long as a, as a 30,000 gallon pool. So again, this is all up to you guys. It is up to the homeowner to figure out your schedule. We, you can call, we can give you some recommendations based off the size of your pool, but we don't know the bather load. We don't know the area. We don't know what's going on in the yard. It's up to you guys to figure out your scheduling. And again, kind of works with season. Um, it's in the summer is when you're gonna be using everything. When you're swimming, you're doing all that, all the use of the pool. Um, in the winter time, you generally will run a lot lower. Um, and I know people are probably asking about it. We generally 
do we we start everything off with a 10 hour we usually do 10 p.m to 8 a.m on all of our startups or close to it um, that's usually what we recommend for summer um, on a general consensus but it again depends on your pool most of the time 10 p.m to 8 a.m for a low speed and 4 a.m to 8 a.m for a high speed is plenty of time for your pool at that point you can then adjust hours you can maybe even kick them down you can run 10 to 7 um, and three to seven and, and you're just you're spending less electricity and you play with it if the pool staying clean and staying sanitized with the chlorine then even better you're not running it as long um, you kind of tweak these and run them as low as possible to keep your pool clean you can save electricity in the meantime with that said on your menu options if you ever now that we're in here and again we'll start over we went to that uh that schedule we hit select to cycle through any of this if you want to change your times from the panel um, we're hitting select button we're going to change you know what we could go eight to four or eight to five eight to six we're going to keep it at the eight to five when we're done you can hit it will back out and save it if we keep hitting select we can now get to each day and you can select each day by hitting the select button you could erase one of those or i'm sorry your up or down button you could erase one of those dashes what this is doing now every monday for some reason um, of your liking the monday is not going to come on now generally speaking some people will use this in the winter time they just don't want to run it every single day so they'll skip some days i'm not a huge fan of it i just i like the pump running every single day um, so i don't think we use a whole lot of this you generally want it seven days a week we're going to back up and start over on this menu up here the other option um, that we use a ton of, if we hit two or up, sorry, and get to the second one is an egg timer. The egg timers are kind of nice, especially for a low speed and a high speed. Um, outside of schedules, if we set your egg timer, we'll hit select a couple times and go, let's say an hour for low speed. Menu out and save it. You'll see two up here. That means you got two schedules going on. You got one as your regular schedule while this is flashing. You can hit the up arrow and see your egg timer. Your egg timer will be anything that is kicked on manually. So if we turn on your low speed manually, it's going to run uh, on a one hour timer and shut off on its own. Kind of cool. If you have a high speed is the is the most used egg timer, I believe. You have an egg timer on for your high speed for an hour. You can test your chems or I need a little bit of acid. You can kick your high speed on. You always want circulation when you're adding chems. Kick it on. Add the acid into the deep brands, no, never above steps or Baja areas, and kick your high speed on and you can walk away. You know that system's gonna turn off in an hour and you're, you're good to go as far as that pump not running all day, burning up electricity. Runs for an hour, runs for two hours, wherever you set it for, and it kicks off on its own automatically. Kind of cool. Um, a lot of people will use these on your pool lights. Um, right now we have it set up as a mock schedule. Um, which you can also do every night the pool light is coming on from 8 um, 8 p.m to midnight you could also create an egg timer for your pool lights i know growing up we are we're always in trouble leaving the pool light on at night um, parents would, would get up in the morning and see the pool light on from us uh, me and my sisters out in the pool all night um, and it's electricity of course we're getting uh we're getting yelled at for it right so you can do egg timers now with this digital setup and you know in three, four hours, anytime you, you kick that light on, it's got a four hour egg timer, three hour, whatever you set it for, it's gonna kick it off automatically. Um, again, most, most people will use the high speed and the pool light probably the, um, more than anything for the, uh, the egg timers. I've seen it used a ton, I guess I should say too, on spa mode. It's not a ton, but some people like spa modes. You get some VRBO homes or some people that are in and out of the home or family, they kind of all use the house as a vacation home. A lot of times they'll set up the spa mode also on an egg timer so it doesn't just run for all night. They'll set up a two hour egg timer, much like a commercial property or a, or a spa, in other words, at a hotel. You always gotta turn those, those knobs for the most part. That's the same thing. It's an egg timer that knows no matter what, when you leave, it's not gonna run all night. It's gonna automatically kick off on you. If we go down, arrow down into, um, into your schedules for your high speed now, Again, if you remember, we have 8 p.m. to 5, or 8 a.m., excuse me, to 5 a.m. for our low speed. So we would go down. We want this to match. We're going to select down to get down there, right? We kick this back to 1 p.m. 
select, select, and you hold the arrow down, and we're going to have this shut off at 5 p.m. Now we have an 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. set up for low speed. We have a 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. set up for high speed. These two can absolutely run together. Um, the high speed or the higher RPM or GPM set on the panel uh, will always override. So I can kick on four things. Whatever the highest RPM or GPM is set for, that's going to override everything and kick on, which is nice in this setup. You now have your high speed coming on at 1 p.m. to clean the pool, but your low speed is also running. Um, your salt system, it's, it's kicking on that chlorine like we talked about. Um, and again, if we go back into that 202, we have the same thing. We have an egg timer set up in there for four hours. Select, you can kick this down to whatever you want. Some menu options in there to use. There is also, we just created a third one. There's also a setup called once only. Um, you can do a once only for some reason if you know you got a a big party, something going on. You could set up a schedule to run, um, let's say in the morning or at night, whatever you want to do. You could set up one schedule, it will run that 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 time frame, and then delete itself. Let's get into one other option in the schedules, um, which I know people get into a lot. This is the most common thing we run into. They'll get into the high speed menu or any kind of menu on this up arrow up here. They create extra schedules real easily by hitting the up arrow, right? All of a sudden, you got four schedules, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You see them a ton. What you're going to do on this, while the four is flashing or whatever you're looking to delete, you're going to hit select. And on the schedule mode, you're going to hit down arrow until you see delete and hit select. Same thing. You can go down until you see delete, hit select, and we're just slowly deleting our, our schedules or anything that you may have created on accident. That's your schedules. Um, any burning questions online so far with schedules? Okay, good to go. Um, generally speaking, this is pretty easy, um, especially when we get into the phone. It's even it's even more user friendly as far as the schedules go. All right, menu. We're done with schedule. We're going to get into some settings. A lot of this we're going to kind of fly through because this is mostly set up um, with our guys. Um, or, or an installation, um, you're going to set up stuff in here. Some of this stuff is now on the app, so it's even easier for homeowners to uh, adjust, and I'll get into that. Um, your clock, if we hit select, simply your clock menu and your day and time, your date, you can set all that stuff. Um, nothing to do under two of two um, unless you want to daylight savings adjust. Um, otherwise, this is your clock and your date. If we hit menu, your arrow down, your are your pumps. So your variable, those of you with the VSF pumps, this is where you can adjust your RPMs or your GPMs. Let's say we go into pump one, you got flow and speeds. You can hit enter or select on a flow and speeds and we now have your schedule. Let's get into something where you see it. We don't have any setup. So you would do, let's say, your low speed is generally 1850 with a salt system go a little bit lower sometimes without it. So let's do 1850 and you're going to see your your pool low. This is generally what you'll see and you'll have all your circuits set up in here. Um, we don't really recommend messing with a whole lot of RPMs, um, GPMs. We set them up um, in conjunction with your in-floor system, with your vacuum to operate um, with the best efficiency. So we don't really recommend getting in here a whole lot. On the app, um, some people do get in there to play with the, the only real thing I see to play with is your water features um, or spa mode. Sometimes people can adjust the spa therapies up or down to their liking. Um, low speed and high speed or cleaner mode, we, we ask that no one touches those uh, RPMs or GPMs that we set up simply because we usually end up getting a call. They've had it run, you know, high speed, they're trying to save energy, so they kick it down to 2400. And then we get a call saying our in-floor is not cleaning. Well, that's because you don't have the pressure coming out of that in-floor system. So we generally don't ask, um, or we ask that you don't play with those. So flow speeds, again, and um, is set up on a startup. You can also go into here, which is kind of cool, for status. We, of course, don't have a pump set up, but you would see your status in here. This is kind of cool if you are um, kind of techy and like to see your RPMs or GPMs. 
and the wattage that it's pulling, you can come in here with the pump on and you can see uh, what your pump is using. Turn a menu out of there. If you had two pumps, you'd have the same option on pump two. Under IntelliClore, um, this is your salt system. Those of you who have salt, you are going to get into here and adjust your percentage of your salt. Um, again, if you're running those eight, nine, 10 hours a day, generally speaking, you're at 60 to 80% um, is what you're going to need for enough production of chlorine in the pool. If you have this again, maxed out at 100% and you're still not getting enough, you need to ramp your low speed hours up. Um, but adjusting this is just a select button coming down to your pool mode and upping or downing your percentage. Again, in the winter time, you're going to lower it down. You don't need 100% at nine hours a day, you're going to you're going to start seeing a ton of chlorine. Kick it down in the winter time. Second menu in here is a super chlorinate. Um, super chlorinate, if you turn it on, is just going to run the cell at max uh, 100% and run the pump. And just the idea is to just dump a ton of chlorine in as fast as it can. What I recommend on chlorine, um, if you need to shock the pool or super chlorinate a pool after a party, something of that nature, I recommend liquid chlorine. Um, or some form of shock you can pick up at a retail store you can get it at our office um, and just dump in a shock it's a lot faster um, work a little bit quicker than just running that salt system for 24 hours so big party stuff like that shock and pool and everyone's done a menu down um, IntelliChem menu it, IntelliChem is a system a chemical system a feed system that feeds your acid into the pool on its own um, It'll also adjust your chlorinator on its own. It kind of basically maintains your pH and uh, essentially your chlorine or uh, or your ORP is what it really maintains. Um, don't have a ton of them out there, but that's that menu. If you get into here, you can play with your status, your values. There's some stuff in there that we don't have time to get into today on the IntelliChem. But that's a chemical feed system um, that will kind of maintain your chemicals. Basically, it will maintain your chemicals for you. So we got heat pump communication. We set this up on startup. There's real, really no need to get into there and play with things. Um, if you get in there and play with things, you're most likely gonna be calling us going, my heat pump doesn't work now. Well, it's because you went in there and messed with some settings that we already had set up and we know your heat pump was working perfect. So don't recommend getting into that. Your circuit names, um, if we hit select, these are where you can customize if you wanted your pool low to say low speed or, or something of that nature, you can get in there and change this simply by pressing select. You can't change the circuit. The circuit is right here. That's your pool circuit. This is your aux one. You could change the name of it though that shows up in your app. Same thing with pool lights. So aux one is this button right here. You could change it if you wanted it to just say lights or, or yard lights, something of that nature. Generally speaking, we set that up on startup. Our menu out of there, circuit functions. Kind of a same thing as some of these menus. We don't recommend you mess with uh, a lot of these. Circuit function is uh, where we're gonna set up things like if you have multicolor lights, we tell it in here, hey, it's a multicolor light. Well, for instance, if I go to the lights, you see IntelliBright, you see generic. So that's telling the lights, hey, this is an IntelliBright system. So when you pick blue, it knows that it's gotta go through a mode to switch the light to blue. The big thing in here is you'll see freeze under every men or every option in circuit functions. Um, the freeze mode is what we talked about with the air temp. Everything's disabled. Generally, we have your freeze protection enabled for low speed only. If it drops below certain degrees in the winter time, it kicks the pump on and just cycles, kicks, keeps everything moving in other words. So recommend keeping that on, up to you, um, but we highly recommend you leave it on just to be safe. We're gonna menu out of circuit functions. Custom names are just that. If you wanted to name your uh, water feature, um, the Grand Falls, something of that nature, you could go in there and, and play around with the custom name um, and create a custom name called Grand Falls, and then you can change your circuit name to that. Uh, valves, same thing in here, most like most of the stuff, this is startup. We were gonna set this up. This is for auto valves. For instance, our water feature over here will do two things. It will kick the pump on, RPM wise, and it also is now set up with an auto valve and it's set up for A, wherever we plug it into in the board. So when you kick that button on on here, your app, it knows to turn a valve and kick your water feature on. That's all that is in there. Two speed pumps, we don't deal with a whole lot um, at all. 
Um, we sell the variable speeds. We have a lot better luck with variable speeds, just a way better pump. Um, two-speed pumps are out there though. So if you have a two-speed pump, they are fully compatible with this panel. Um, this is where you have some setting options in there to control the two-speed pump so it knows what to turn on and off. Solar, um, you will see enabled if you have a heat pump or if you have solar panels on the roof. Um, again, not recommended you really play with these menu options um, simply because if you have this stuff, we've already set it all up to run perfect. If you start coming in here and messing with stuff, you'll end up calling us or, or having some bad luck, you know, stuff's not operating like it should. So don't really recommend getting into solar. Delays, this is what we were talking about earlier. If you want to talk um, or have a cool down mode for your heater or valves, have a delay. This is where you would enable it. We don't generally use this a whole lot, so most of you out there will see no, no on everything. English metric, we're starting to get into some stuff now, like if you want to change your temperature settings, um, the way it reads out to English or uh, to metric, you can do that. Um, your language, all that kind of stuff. We're not gonna play with it. IS4, 10 button spa, these are uh, a lot of remote setups now. If you have uh, a 10 button spa side, let's say at the spa itself, you get into this menu and you can tell it what you want each button to do, basically. The top row, one through five, you want it to turn on the spa. You can, you can move these around in here as far as order goes, that's all it is. Quick touch, 10, the 10B pump control, um, we don't use, the quick touch is the same thing you can get in there. If you have a quick touch remote, real small little, uh, nice little handheld remote, just got four buttons on off on it, you can tell it what those four buttons need to turn on and off. Um, man heat, calibration, erase EEPROM, we don't uh, really recommend you mess with any of these. Um, Calibration, obviously we can calibrate some temp sensors. Erasing your EEPROM, it's gonna ask you about 64 times if you wanna do that. Um, if you continue to go through all that, you're going to be calling us and going, I need you to come out here now and reset my settings. Because that's essentially what EEPROM is doing, is erasing this board to factory settings. Um, all the settings, the pump speeds, everything we've set up for you are all going to be gone. Um, last two, set password. You can set a password in this panel. Some of you out there with the VRBO home, stuff like that, you can operate a, a password mode um, that would basically uh, disable people from getting into it, obviously. Wireless addresses for a certain remote. Um, we don't do a lot of them anymore, but wireless addresses were called the Easy Touch Remote. Um, that's where you would just sync up that remote. Again, if you've had the remote and it's synced up, you usually don't have to get into here, but if you wanted to, um, add a remote yourself. When you read the instructions, it's going to have you come into your wireless address. That's where this is, very bottom of um, your settings menu. Next one is your spa side. Uh, generally, ours are off. Spa side are those remotes. Um, that's all that is. It's a disable enable button. Um, your diagnostics. Not a lot in here for homeowners other than your chlorinator. If you are wanting to see what your chlorinator is reading ppm wise of salt, um, salt. You generally want to be 3,000 to 3,400 is in range and, and perfect range at that. If you kick your low speed on and let it run for five, 10 minutes, you want your pool to circulate and you want it to go through this diagnostics. You can come into diagnostics at the panel itself. You can also do this from your phone and you can see what it's reading for salt levels. And again, you want to be around 3,000 to 3,400 PPMs. If you're seeing it really low or something looks off, please shut everything down and Clean your salt cell first. Clean your salt cell real well with a mild, uh, a little bit of acid and mostly water and let it soak. Um, we did uh, that class last month. If you're interested in seeing that, we have YouTube videos of that and the links. Um, clean your salt cell and then redo your test. See if you're still getting, um, you should, your numbers should come up. If you're still getting a really low reading or something's really off on salt, always double check, triple check your actual salt levels. You can take your water in have us come out we have digital meters um take it in somewhere um for the quickest response see what they're reading at like a leslie let's say um sometimes salt is still okay and you may have a problem with the cell you may just need to have, have cleaned it something that have not of that nature don't just see a low salt reading and just know you got to add a bunch of bags that's usually not the case um we're getting a comm link here because we don't have one hooked up today we menu doubt out of the coordinator you have your water temp 
simply just showing you what your water temp is. If you had a heat pump or solar on the top of your house, you could see what that, that's a separate temp reading altogether. You would see what that's reading. And of course your air temp. Circuit names on, reset system, flash update. A lot of this is for Pentair or for us to do if we needed to get into um, something of that nature. We don't mess with that a whole lot. We're gonna menu out of diagnostics and that's it for the panel. Um, pretty easy. The biggest thing in here for most homeowners is schedules. Um, and again, that is way easier to, uh, to do on the phone, which we are going to now get into. We're gonna mirror my phone. Um, we're going to get in and see um, kind of how to operate the app. And then uh, we'll pretty much be wrapped up with the class. So hopefully that helps with the panel. Um, I do know I missed one thing over here, um, just in case anyone was asking about it. The electronics, the valves, the relays, and the IntelliClore, these are little uh, breakers, essentially. Uh, your IntelliClore is your salt system. Your relays are the relays that we talked about that control that stuff. Electronics, of course, are your board. And then you got those auto valves. If at any point you see those popped out on you, you're generally gonna need to call us. Um, sometimes they'll pop out, it's very rare, um, just from a glitch or something happened. Generally, when they're popped out, there's an issue and that's what they're there for. Much like a GFI on the side of the panel, um, down on your right side, all the way down to the bottom, you'll have a GFI outlet there um, connected and every pool has a GFI outlet, no matter the panel or a standalone system, you have a GFI outlet there for your pool light. Um, it operates just like these do. So if your GFI is tripped, always reset that before calling us and saying our pool light is, is out. We get a lot of calls that the GFI just tripped. They're very sensitive and they're sensitive for a reason because they're protecting the light and water. They're sensitive. Sometimes they will trip with, with storms or something like that and you just simply reset it. Your light is working fine. If you have a real problem with the pool light, it will trip as soon as you turn your pool light back on. That's what they're designed to do. Same thing with the, with the relays up top. Ready to do the phone? You got any questions going on online? And again, thanks for hanging in there with us, guys. We're this is new to us uh, to have the classroom empty, just Andrew and I. And um, so Andrew, Andrew is handling a ton more uh, questions, I'm sure, than usual. Most of you guys are in the class. And Wait, one thing, I just want to go over this real quick. One time, I just got to give a. Like for a water feature, how to do a schedule anytime real fast. For a water feature? Yeah, it shows zero. You do yeah. So the question is, is setting up from zero, no schedules, for something like a water feature. So starting from the main menu, we're going to hit menu once. We're simply going to arrow down to schedules and hit select on schedules. We arrow down, we find our water feature menu. We hit select. We've got a zero of zero. The none is always gonna be the first thing that flashes. You simply push up. Once you're on new, you're going to hit select and you got your schedule on there. Boom, you're on one of one. We hit select, you're gonna leave schedule mode if you want it to come on every day. Um, a lot of model homes will do this. That's why when you're in model homes, you'll see the water features running all day. They're, they're, they're on schedules. So then you would set up your time, whatever you're looking for as far as the water feature schedules to come on or come off. You can also do an egg timer at our at our pool park down here. If for some reason you haven't seen our pool park, I really recommend you coming down here and checking it out. A beautiful park with six different pools. We use egg timers down there on a ton of the water features. We don't want to run in all day, right? We just set up an egg timer where we are having anytime we walk customers down there, uh, we can kick the stuff on. It runs for 15 minutes and they all shut off. So essentially when we're walking away, all the water features are now shutting off. If you would create a schedule, you want your water feature to come on every morning, seven, eight in the morning, you enjoy your coffee for till noon, 11, you can do that in here and set your timers. So, and then once you, let's do seven in the morning to 10 a.m. You're out there enjoying your coffee. You want your shear running, your water feature, we have seven to 10, we can hit your menu button and it's now saved in there, one of one. You'll also see your water feature light just came on because we're inside of that seven to 10 for six more minutes. And then this will now shut off, so good. All right, we're gonna give us one second here. We're gonna flash over to uh, the mirror of my phone so we can get into the app.
Okay. So the app, now that we're in my phone, that's my beautiful daughter. The app right here, Pender Screen Logic, up where her face is, we're going to tap. Let me let me back out of here real quick so we can go back into it and see two things. We're going to have a local and we're going to have a remote. The local is automatically going to connect. When you're at home, if you're on your Wi-Fi on your phone, you will then see your, your phone automatically connect locally when you're on your Wi-Fi. Um, it connects right into your personal um, app. Ours is connected into a, a system at our office here. When I back out of here, I'm going to back out of here. and I'm going to go into um, a separate pool. And so we can kind of see a lot of these things. Um, I'm gonna try and, let me try and cover most of this in this um, local app real quick. So the first thing, you know, I'm going to backtrack. I'm going to close that out. I'm going to go into remote. So remote, this is your guys' unique system. Um, your remote app is going to be a six digit code located on the piece that's connected to your router. We generally set that up on your intro. Um, if you get into a new phone, a new pa uh, tablet, anything of that nature, your Pentair colon number, you will have to um, update to your new phone or your new app, or if you delete the app and start over. Once you manually enter it in one time, it will save it. Um, remote setup is going to be if you are away from the house and you want to operate things. So once we have that pulled up, now we're going to simply hit connect. It's going to log us into um, this pool. So pretty easy stuff. This is most of the stuff we just went over. You see your outside temperature on the top right. It's reading 65 degrees at this particular house. Um, the mail icon you can set up in settings. Um, if you wanted to be emailed any kind of alerts, I don't recommend it. Um, it is a lot of computer driven stuff. Um, so they read, uh, constantly read uh, readouts on the pump, on the panel. You, you end up with a lot of emails that aren't kind of seem scary um, and they're generally nothing. So um, not, not to, uh, I don't recommend it a whole lot. We go into your, I'm tapping my low speed now. We're going into our low speed menu. Um, and this is on an Apple, by the way. The Android will look a, a little bit different, but essentially the same thing. The low speed you can see up top is running on this pool. The low speed um, or the pool temperature in this pool is reading 78 degrees. And we have a set point set for 85 degrees. The heater down at the bottom you can see is flashing. This pool is calling for heat. So if we simply hit the off button, it would shut the heater down. You see that whole heater menu option go away. We're going to kick the heater back on. And again, like we talked about the panel, it's asking for 85. The pool temperature is reading 77. You will then start to see that bottom uh, right heater button flashing. That means that it is calling for heat. In other words, if you were out of your panel with that thing flashing, you will now see that heater button on the top right that we talked about. I'm going to hit the top left arrow, the back arrow. We're back into our main menus. Spa mode is the exact same thing. And again, if you leave your heater, you see it down there enabled, it's lit up green, but it's not flashing and you got 101 temp. If at any point you wanted to get into that spa mode, you simply hit the white spa button up top and it would turn your spa mode on, turn the valves. And because we have it enabled down at the bottom, it automatically knows to enable that heater and fire it. Um, and then simply hitting the spa button again up top would shut the spa mode off. I'm going to hit the back arrow. Our lighting menu is the next menu. The first menu, turn lights on or off, is simply an on-off button for the pool lights. You could flip them all on or flip them all off. That's just a light switch. Uh, if we go back, we're going to go to lighting. This is, again, this is why the app is so nice. This is way easier than the panel. You can now pick party mode, romance, Caribbean. If we uh, select any of these, if I touch the red button, it will then give you about a three second delay and it will sync any lights that are in that backyard and connected to this panel to a red light. Then let's, let's click, uh, I'll click red. If I back out, 
go into here in a few seconds we should see this dip switch um, come on and we're into red lights now back up while that's doing that and we'll get we'll come back to that should be should come on in a second here the next menu is your there you go you see that lighting lit up so if we go to lights on off um should switch over to the it's gonna fight me now but you see that lighting lit up top the light was on i just shut it off i've got a delay here so that's that's why you're seeing it on now so if i tap that once that will shut all their lights back off we back out the lighting number is gone if we go into features got three easy things in here just like our panel you got your spillway your high speed and your water feature Again, these are just on off switches. If you had something set up for your spillway mode, let's say, um, or your high speed for an A timer, anytime you click these on manually, it's going to now uh, run that A timer. We just kicked it on manually. So if we had a two hour A timer set up, it's going to run the high speed for two hours um, and shut down. Kick that back off. We're going to back up. So feature menus, anything that you have. Um, in this app, anything outside of low speed and spa, um, and we can even put your lights in there um, outside of that light menu if needed, um, but anything outside of your low speed and spa, you are going to see in that feature menu. If I touch pumps, we're gonna go into this system. This uh, particular pool has two pool, uh, two pool pumps. So if I go to the IntelliFlow one, this is where you could simply scroll and you can see all your speeds. Again, we don't recommend playing with any of these, these are set up from us, um, how we know the in-floor system or the vacuum is going to run correctly. Um, if you start playing it in particular with your high speed and your low speed, you're gonna have issues as far as cleaning sometimes, or if you run your low speed low enough, um, your heater can have problems, um, your salt system will not come on. So we're gonna back out of there. Um, same thing with IntelliFlow 2, you have options in there to adjust your speeds. Intellichlor, for those of you with salt systems, this is where you'll see your salt level output. You'll see your pool output is 100%. Um, spa output, I don't worry about a whole lot just because every night when the system runs, it does uh, run through the in-floor system um, and simply makes your uh, pool and spa one body of water as far as salt levels go, chlorine, all that stuff. It's all one body of water through a mix. Um, but that's your, where your pool output is, your salt levels, your super chlorination button is also down there. Um, again, to get a salt reading, you need your low speed on and you need to leave it on for about 10 minutes and then you can come back in here and get an up-to-date reading. I'll back out of there. <coughs> Excuse me. Your schedules, I click on the first one. It's gonna give you a little prompt. You can uh, stop that if you like. Your prompt, or your uh, schedules, excuse me, you got your high speed and your low speed in this particular pool. They're running their low speed, 3 a.m. to 5 p.m. And you can see at 2 a.m. the high speed comes on for an hour by itself and it runs for uh, six hours till 8 a.m. Those first, uh, the first hour is not doing anything but running the high speed, but at three, that low speed comes on and runs um, till 5 p.m. This is because we are heating this pool, but also at 3 a.m. to 8 a.m., for five hours, your salt system is now coming on like we had talked about in the schedule. So you see right here, they're mirroring each other or they're overlapping each other to keep that salt system on. This menu, you can also hit add new scheduled program down at the bottom. It will ask you what you'd like to add a program for. Let's do lights, hit done. And now you have a new schedule for lights. If we simply um, press the, the start time, you could change it. You know, We want them to come on at, let's say 8 p.m done your stop time you want to shut off at 10 p.m you hit done now you have 8 p.m to 10 p.m every day for that particular uh circuit in this case it's lights if we want to delete it we simply swipe left and delete the menu or, or the um, schedule out of there we're going to back up and again those egg timers are on on this own its own menu in the app you can uh, adjust your egg timers in here everything comes factory for 12 hours you see um, this particular pool we have the high speed set up for the two hour egg timer just like we spoke about anytime the high speed's kicked on manually it will run for two hours and shut off does not affect the schedule 
for running five or six hours, whatever you have it set for, that is a schedule mode. It's completely separate from the egg timer. Egg timer is simply anything pressed on manually. There's a history button here. Uh, history buttons um, are going to, I'm gonna click into the temperatures. This will give you, kind of hard to read on a phone. Um, you can log into the ScreenLogic app on a computer also. Um, but this gives you a, a brief history of your heating, of temperature readings, that kind of stuff. This is generally more for us or for Pentair if we're having some issues um, with something they like to come in here and it kind of gives them some, some data basically. We're gonna back out of there. Um, history on IntelliChem, this will also do on that IntelliChem system that adjusts your pH and ORP. This will give you your pH and ORP history where it's reading your pH, your ORP, and it just gives you a data sheet, essentially. Delays and alerts. We'll click on the system alerts. We've got a priming alarm. We've got a low flow error. Again, all this stuff is null and void right now. We know the low speed's running, the heater's running. Um, the salt system just gave us a, a chlorination reading, or a salt reading, excuse me. So we know it has plenty of flow. Um, this might have been something when it first kicked on and was priming, it wasn't reading something um, or reading a, a good flow rate, and so it aired out. If you have the email set up, you will get these emails um, as these come across and be calling us all the time and really everything's running good. So I don't worry too much about these, but they're there for um, to help anything. So um, system delays. We have a cancel delays again, like we talked about in the panel. If we want to cancel any delays that had possibly been set up, you can cancel the, the delays. Um, spot side remotes too um, are enabled on this uh, particular pool. Um, you could disable it or enable it. Is all that's there for. Um, the last menu is your settings. Um, obviously, this is more per homeowner. Sync iOS time date to system. Um, if you wanted that on or off. I have on my particular phone, the dark theme at the very bottom. I love this option. I love it on phones in particular with, with apps in general, I should say, um, easier on the eyes. If you switch that off, you get back to the white setup. Um, not a big fan of that. I just like the dark theme, but it's personal preference. Um, you can also adjust for your daylight savings time. Um, and then of course the last button is a logout button. So if I hit log out, we're back to the main menu, I can switch over to local. Um, again, local to remote, if you're, if you're home and you're on your Wi-Fi, you can, anytime Android or Apple, if you're home and you're on your same Wi-Fi uh, address that your panel is set up to, um, it is going to automatically connect you. Um, just be careful with this if you're connected to it um, and then leave the house, it's obviously gonna be disabled as soon as you lose your, your Wi-Fi um, distance. Remote setup's always good for certain modes as if you're at, you know, the, the old the old, uh, the old story of being at a restaurant, um, maybe getting off of, a, of an airplane and you want that spa to be heated up. Um, when you get home, you can go into your remote setup. You can log into your particular system, kick that spa mode on, and you know when you get home, that spa is 102, 101, whatever you like it to be. Um, that's basically it for the app. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, there is a there is a ScreenLogic config app, um, and the only reason I bring it up is when, if you're downloading this app for the first time, or maybe you've bought the ScreenLogic and adding this stuff yourself, um, you will see two different ScreenLogic apps on the, in the App Store um, or in the in the um, Android Store for this particular app. Um, it, the config app is generally used for service technicians. Um, or Pentair themselves to adjust uh, some settings. Um, pretty much the stuff that, sorry about that, pretty much the stuff that um, we went over in the main panel itself. Um, and a lot of that stuff we used to use the config app for speeds, that kind of stuff are in the, the regular app anyways now. So it makes it about as uh, homeowner friendly as it can to just use the, the main app and be done with it. In other words, you shouldn't need the config app. Um, I think that about covers the app. Is there any questions online that are kind of burning you up? Um. Bear with us here. We're making sure everyone online is uh, is being handled and getting any questions handled that, that they may need. So 
any tips on if customers are having local connection issues with their screen logic, anything that they think to try to do? So that's a good question. The question is, um, is there any any questions or any tips that we can have if we're having local problems um, connecting locally? And there is. There's a couple of things. Um, people sometimes don't like to hear this, but routers get outdated just like everything else nowadays. Um, chances are if you have a five, six-year-old router at this point, maybe even um, newer than that, um, your router just simply isn't strong enough to get out to the outside um, and everything can touch uh, or talk to each other. Um, simply updating your router or uh, spending a couple hundred bucks on a new one, um, depending on what you need, will generally fix that. Um, just to give you a little more distance. Um, there's a lot of mesh networks and stuff like that going on now that also help with that. The other thing to do, and we try to do this um, while we, you know, on orientation, we try to help out and do this anyways, but um, if you're moving the, the, we call it a screen logic brick, which is the little white metal box and the little plastic receiver that connects to your router, if you're moving this stuff around on your own, you can unplug it and then reboot it by simply plugging it back in. If you're moving these around um, on your own, maybe moving it to a different room, keep them as, as far away from any other electronics that you can. Obviously, the closer to the panel, the better. But if your router is in a, in a, in a box in the laundry room, like a lot of these new houses have, you, you have some issues usually if you just kind of cram all that stuff into the box. Some, some houses we've we push in there, people don't want to mount them on the wall or kind of have them in the way. We've crammed them in there and we've had them work beautiful. But if you're having issues connecting locally or remotely for that matter, you want to try and get those two units away from everything um, simply by running it up the wall. If you're in an office, maybe put it on top of the desk. Um, the big one for us is TVs lately. Um, we're having a lot of TVs obviously running more and more ethernet wires um, or routers to the TVs um, or a hard wire connection, I should say. If you're trying to, um, tag off of that um, or, or use a switch or something like that, get it away from the TV. The TVs, if you're simply hiding everything behind the TV, you're going to have some issues sometimes too. Um, we had a particular job where we couldn't figure it out, couldn't figure it out, it would work perfect. Every day when the, the homeowner's uh, children would get home, they would kick the TV on after school and also the app would stop working. And that one was kind of a tricky one to figure out. And, kind of all laughed about it. We just happened to find out one day when they got home, we were running everything, it's working fine. The kids got home, turned the TV on, and boom, we were dead. And and we put it together and go, okay, we're having issues. Just some funky stuff with some signals sometimes, with some um, with some uh, kind of settings like that where you will, you can lose your signal or kind of get muffled with other stuff going on. There's a lot of Wi-Fi and a lot of um, signals going on through the house these days. So. Um, that should help. If you haven't anything past that, um, recommend calling us and, and just having us come out. Um, it's electronics. Stuff can stuff can go bad. Stuff can um, need updates. Stuff can. There's all kinds of stuff with this electronic stuff that um, that you may need, or you know. And sometimes um, simply unplugging your router, the old uh, unplug the router and unplug the screen logic trick, and letting them reboot will fix the issues too. Maybe shut down your panel outside completely. And reboot it all. So, a customer that has a install system but doesn't show the Intel or Proxy Screen Launcher have any form of configuration. Yeah, so the question is um, they've got the app, um, they're coming in here, they're not seeing the Intel Core on the app. Um, let's get into it. We'll, I'll go over to the config app. We'll see if I can get into this. Um, you can do it from the config app. If we connect, so in here, if you're in this config app and you go to other equipment, you'll see your chlorinator present button right there. It is simply off. So if you if you slide that over to on, you will uh, you will now see your chlorinator when you log out of this. You'll see it back in that app. You will be able to see your chlorinator popping up in the app. If you don't see it after that, um, then give us a call. We may have something going on. Maybe it's just not communication-wise. For some reason, something's not not talking to each other. That's where that would be. Yeah. So, just as I back up, we'll go back to config. 
we can go to your gear. So if you come into, the question was if you have a spa mode and you just want to get that out of there, this config app is where you would need to be on that. So if we go to, let me back up here. If we go to setup circuits, first thing that's always in there is main spa. So if you don't have a spa where that show on function is, we click it and we would simply press don't show um, and then hit save. And that will now eliminate it. When you re-log into your ScreenLogic app, your spa mode would be gone. Why we're in here, this is where you can also tell, um, tell the system if you wanted to, it's not real common, but like, let's say you're high speed, you want it to be in that same pool low button. Um, you could click your feature section and you could click pool section. If we hit save, it would now move your high speed button, the on off button into the same pool circuit on the app. So in other words, if you hit pool, you'll see pool low and your high speed in there. Some, uh, some, excuse me, some people like that kind of being together. Just keep in mind, clicking high speed by itself on is not going to enable your heater um, to come on. It's not gonna kick on your salt system, any of that nature. So I kind of like to keep them on the feature menus. It's totally up to you guys. Um, while we're in here, uh, Again, schedules, there's all kinds of stuff in here that's now in the app, so there's not a whole lot of uh, need for this app anymore. If we go into general settings, you can now click into your own system info. You could create a password. Um, generally not needed because that six digit code is yours, uh, your unique code to your pool. Um, clock and temp, location, um, homepage, there's there's some stuff in here, and there there's your email alert settings too if you wanted stuff emailed to you. Um, you could do it in here also. So. Um, that's the config app. Um, and while we're talking about all this, you can always go online and you can get into, um, Pentair has a link for the screen logic. You can do, uh, you can download it and have it on your desktop. Or I believe you can go on to their own screen logic website now too. You would need your six digit code and you can log in remotely anywhere in the world from a computer. And as long as your system is up and running at the house, you can get into anything from a computer and kick stuff on and off also. Yes. Andrew's talking about um, adding landscape lights to a panel, um, which we do get into every once in a while when we when we build our new pools or people upgrading to this panel, anything in particular of that nature. Um, this is essentially what we talked about on the panel itself. On your F, your F button is always your low speed, so that's always used up. If you have lights, which almost every single pool is going to have lights, you're going to use up that one, maybe two relays for your lights. Um, and then, the, so number three, let's say, is your high speed. That is a is a function where we can move that to the F circuits because it's just a communication um, type feature that we can move to the um, we can move to the feature circuits. Then that opens up a relay. At that point, call us, please. Um, if you're good with electronics, you know what you're doing. Um, I still recommend calling us. Let us come out, open up the panel. Um, we can help you out by all means. We we uh, we enjoy that. We we'd like you to call us, and and we really recommend that um, being able to help you guys out by connecting that in there. Um, it simply we we simply take your transformer or whatever is running your landscape lights to. Um, so basically we run it to a relay and we, we cut the plug off of normally off the cord um, and then we, we hardwire it to a relay and you can now run your landscape lights from the panel. You can set up a schedule for that, the egg timers, all that kind of stuff too, which is pretty cool. The only thing you can't do um, on some of these landscape lights, they have a, a solar sensor that will kick the lights on and off automatically with solar. Um, and then uh, that, that function is disabled when you're doing that. Anything though with landscape lights or anything that you guys are uncertain um, about doing, please call us. We, we'd be more than happy to come out there and help you guys out. Got anything else, Andrew? Uh, you just kind of go over just to normally, you know, I think I've been able to say, uh, feel free to call our office or email us. Yes. Yes, um, as far as all this stuff goes, or yeah. just, yeah, so anything, anything, because we're uh, pressed for time, um, anything we didn't go over, if you guys have any questions, please feel free 
um, give our office a call. Our direct service office is 480-967-4081. Uh, that will get you right into our service department. Um, if you call the main line, you just simply ask for service. Um, but again, that number is 480-967-4081. We'd be more than uh, happy to answer any questions over the phone um, or simply get a technician out there if you need a technician out there to go over some stuff hands-on with you. Right now with this COVID-19 uh, virus going on, we're trying to keep our distancing away from homeowners. So we ask that um, if it's something we need to get into the house for or, or meet with you on a panel, we ask to wait a couple weeks if it's not burning so we can we can let this uh, virus pass hopefully and, uh, and kind of um, keep our distancing. But yes, give us a call. I'm more than happy to always help you guys out. Um, and again, the, if there's anyone in here still that has the Intella Center, which is the touch screen, please um, look out over the next week to two weeks for a link um, that we're gonna do. It won't be streaming yet, but we're gonna do a, a same kind of class like this um, where we can hopefully answer as much questions as we can. Um, with that said, and if Andrew is good to go, um, we're going to log off here. We appreciate you guys uh, streaming with us today. Um, Appreciate you hanging in there with us with the with the COVID-19 uh, virus going around. Um, we're still trying to provide information for you guys, but keeping everyone safe. Um, look forward to seeing your guys' faces down the road again. We enjoy the, the interaction, and um, and so we miss it too. We're just uh, we're we're hoping all this passes and everyone stays safe. So uh, have a great weekend. And again, if you need anything else, please call us 480-967-4081. Thank you.